All right, so the plastic set up, and the next step is to go get our old box that we built. We built it to be a garden table, so it sit up, sat up on legs on our deck in an apartment several years ago. We put a wire mesh on the bottom to keep the dirt from falling through, so I'll show that. But what it's going to help us do here is keep bugs and critters out from coming in underneath. We do have a lot of chipmunks where we live, and they like to eat everything. We also have mice, voles, moles. <laughs> we have all kinds of little ground critters here. Hopefully between the layers of plastic and the mesh that we have underneath, that's a wire mesh, that'll keep things from coming up from underneath. Well, here's the garden table. You can see it has all this wire mesh on the back of it. That's to keep the critters out. Hopefully this will fold up and be a good place to be a rooting spot for all of our plants. You can see it's super sloped here. That's gonna make all the water run towards the front. Probably don't want all the water running towards the front in the box itself. But once it hits here uh, below the box, we do want it actually to run down the hill as opposed to running into the house. I'm just gonna lift up the front end of the box so that the box stays flat, but the water will continue to go the direction it's supposed to go. One of the things I'm realizing in doing this, if the box itself is on a slope, then all the water's gonna drain out this way, but we have to drain the water away from the house. On the other side, if I keep the box elevated like this and don't put anything underneath it, Basically all the weight of the sand and core that's going in here is going to weigh this thing down and then I'm going to end up with pushing the mesh down that's designed to keep all the critters out. What I'm going to do is put more mulch underneath here so that the mulch will support the box, keep it uh, insulated underneath a little bit better because we're going to put the heating pad in here. So I need to tip this up, bring more mulch in, then lay this back down, then put the heating pad in. <laughs> Mostly flat box, slight bit of slope, but that's okay. And we've got a flat space underneath. Next I'm gonna put in the heating mat that's gonna go in the bottom of here to help the roots grow. The tops we're still gonna let freeze. We've still got cold, cold weather happening at the end of January here. So we've got February and March where we'll have a couple of cold months and then we'll have March and April, which are snowiest months. So March is a cold and snowy month. April will be snowy. May might be kind of snowy. We just let these plants sit here like they normally would in nature, but the difference is they're going to have a warm base underneath for growing roots. The heating pad I got on Amazon, and it's from a company called iPower. It's the iPower Seed Starter Heat Mat. And they used this last year actually inside, but I ended up with a lot of mold problems and fungus problems growing inside last year and so hopefully this will be a good place for us to be propagating plants it comes with a plug that plugs into the mat and then it also comes with the temperature control it's got this little temperature sensor and you can put this in the ground and make sure the soil is staying a certain warmth even if the air temperature outside is cooler the roots are actually not going to freeze as long as i monitor what the temperature is in the dirt so you can see here it's giving me the option to set a temperature that's uh, going from this probe, what it thinks the temperature on the probe is, and currently it's in Celsius. It's 5 degrees Celsius outside. It's actually a pretty decent day here in Colorado, so it's about 42 degrees, 41, 42 degrees, but we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. So I will set this to stay above 6 degrees, and I'll stick this probe in the ground. That's about 45, 50 degrees, 45, yeah, uh, 6, 7 degrees Celsius. Um, you can change it to Fahrenheit as well if you want, so... But I'll set it so that it keeps the temperature of the soil above 45, 50 degrees to keep the roots from freezing while at the same time letting the top of the plants harden off. And this is for hardwood cuttings. So we're taking these cuttings here in January. Um, I also took some a little earlier, but I've got those in the fridge inside of some peat. So we're going to put those in here. I've got some plums. We're going to do grapes and we're going to do blue spruce as well to see if we can get blue spruce to actually sprout some roots. I don't think sprouts the right word. See if we can get it to grow some roots. <laughs> Here, you can see it climbing because I'm actually holding the sensor. So it's sensing the temperature of my hand as it's warming up. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but 
in any case, it's warming up as I'm holding it with my hand. So we're going to mix this coir with sand for putting our cuttings into. You can see I've filled the wheelbarrow there with a piece of plastic because it actually has a crack in the bottom of it. I don't want the water to leak out when I put this coir in there. But you can get this block of coir from Amazon. I don't remember how much it is. It's not that expensive relative to other growing media. On Prime, it comes to you free shipping. Not an advertisement in particular for this brand, but we did find this to be pretty affordable. Next step is to throw the coir into the wheelbarrow to fill the wheelbarrow with some water, just enough to actually moisten this coir. And now we wait for it to absorb the moisture. We don't have a lot of sand around. You can find it in the bottom of riverbeds and stuff, but it's frozen. Everything's frozen here right now. Basically, I just picked up a couple bags of sand. You can pick up whatever you'd like. I mean, there's a variety of different thoughts and schools on what growing medium you should use. A lot of people will just say mix vermiculite and perlite in 50-50 mix. I thought that seemed quite expensive, uh, so I just went with sand and the coir, which I could get really affordably. Test it out, see what works for you. I have my coir claw from mixing this around, but this is a half wheelbarrow now of coir from that one block. So if you wanted to, you could get multiple blocks and have more, and I'm realizing I'm probably going to need to do that eventually here. But what I'll probably do is just do two sides here. So we've got these little dividers in the middle of the box. I'll just fill two out of the three sections or dividers here with the coir and the sand mix and that's what we will use for the first round of cuttings. I'm going to put a layer of sand on the bottom to hold the heat in from the heating pad and just provide a little insulator underneath and then we'll mix the next batch of sand with the core and have our sand and core mix. So I'm going to come back and shore up this side over here. I just put another 2x4 in there. For now, this is the scrap wood that I have around. And I'm a little short on time today, so in order to get this done, I am going to just set it up this way, where I've got the heating pad on this side over here and the heating pad on this side over here. So this will just climb up the wall over here, and then this will be a space for cuttings to go into. I can already feel the sand starting to absorb some of the moisture from the coir, so that's pretty cool. So what we're going to want to do is wet this down really well. I've got my sensor here, and I'm just going to pull this little suction cup off. Easier said than done while holding the camera. And then I'm just going to stick this right down into the soil so that I can adjust the temperature based on what the soil temperature is. And that's kind of next to the mat, so I probably want to go somewhere more in the middle here. But that should tell me across most of the soil what the temperature is like. Now, obviously, right up here next to the edge of the board, when we get more cold weather, it's going to be colder. So I'm going to come in just a little bit to plant things in. Having it on the outside like this, it should create a little bit of warmth on the outside to just make sure that the ground doesn't freeze while these plants are trying to grow roots. You can, of course, just stick things in the ground and wait for them to come up. If they're hardy for your climate, then that should work to not have to even heat the ground underneath. But I'm doing this to try and speed up the process. So I don't know if I showed it earlier, but you can see on the temperature here, that's in Celsius, so 14.2 is the temperature in the soil right next to the heating pad, where if I pull this out, you'll see the temperature start to drop pretty quickly. And it's almost, I mean, I would say the air temperature outside right now is 
It's probably 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. So that will keep dropping, especially if I hold it up here in the air. It'll keep dropping until it gets down too close to whatever the air temperature is. It's probably a little warmer here right next to the house. But again, if I put it back in the soil, that's going to keep the roots of the plants or the potentially growing roots of the plants warmer so that we can get a little grow start on our plants growing for the season. And I have forgotten how to set this thing in Fahrenheit instead, but it doesn't really matter. You can see though, you can set it to be a temperature. So what I'm gonna do is set this It'll start blinking here in a second, and then I'll be able to set it. Down to 16 is 61. That's a good marker for Celsius. So I'm going to set it to be 15 degrees. And right now it's showing that the soil is 14 degrees. So it will heat until it knows that the soil is 15 degrees, and then it will shut off. 15 degrees again being, I don't know, 58, 59 degrees, because 16 is 61. So 16 Celsius is 61 Fahrenheit. But this little probe that's in the soil then will tell us you know, when, when the temperature can be turned down, basically, or when this thing can stop heating because the soil is at that temperature. Number one reason, I guess, that cuttings fail is because they are pointed downward when they should be pointed upward. So when you take cuttings from hardwood things, uh, you want to make sure that the cutting is pointing to the right direction. So I believe I've got these all in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is just use a razor blade knife and I'm going to cut them and then we're going to dip them into a rooting powder. Um, this is just a miracle Grow one, but you can get lots of them. Apparently they're all the same. Basically not too much difference between any one brand or another is what I've generally heard from pretty much every video I've watched online about rooting things. But you don't want to dip straight into here because you could transfer diseases between plants. So I'm just going to put some out into the bowl here. Then I will do my cuttings here. So as I understand it, where your growth will come from is in the nodes like this. And so I'm just going to cut away a little bit out of that node and just try and scuff up the bottom of the cutting here a little bit. And then we'll dip that in the hormone powder. Knock off the excess. I'm gonna just do that quickly with a few of these here. And I did have these sitting in a wet paper towel, so just to try and keep some moisture in them. You may wanna do the same when you take your cuttings. You definitely wanna take off any side branches because you really want it to put all of its energy not into supporting anything other than growing roots. I'm going to take these three and we're going to go put them in the ground just to show the process of that. But uh, I will do the rest of these as well. So I've got my cuttings on the soil here with rooting powder on them. And then I'm just going to make some holes. And that's about as far back as I'm going to go because the heater is right here underneath here. So I'm just going to work my way forward. Nice thing about the screwdrivers it had sort of a built in stop for these holes. So as I'm going in, it's just stopping right where the top, or where the handle of the screwdriver meets the, I guess, blade of the screwdriver. So now I've got some holes in my soil here. And I'm just gonna take and put this in there. And give the rooting powder a chance to set up for just a second. And I may have put these too close together uh, as far as like these here, so I may just go here in between instead. And then I'm just going to kind of close in around that on the top. And then once I get all these in, I'm going to water them real well. So I will go get the rest of those prepared. I'll make some more holes here. Go get the rest of those prepared. Our last step here is to, well, our last two steps. One, now that we've got all those sticks in there, you can probably see them. I'll show you in just a minute, but there's a bunch of them in there now. And is to label them so that we know what's what. So these are cuttings from the farm where Carrie grew up. Just took some cuttings from there one day while we were there. So that's where these came from. So I'm gonna stick this in the ground and then we're gonna water them in. That will be set up of the plums for this particular time. And then I'm gonna come back and add more cuttings into here. We've got currants to put in here. We've got a variety of different cuttings we can put in here. We're going to add those in. Ideally, some cuttings from our apple trees that we planted last year. I'm not sure if they're ready for cuttings yet, but I will check them out and we'll see once I can get up the hill and the snow's a little bit more gone.
So to give a final look here, we have 16, 17, 18. And who knows how many of those will take. We might end up with five out of this. We might end up with 18. You never know. We will see what happens out of these, but I'm going to add more. So I've added this stick here, and then when I put another row in, I'll put row, a row, a row, and then I'll just put in a stick here to say, that's what I planted there. And then I'll put in a row of things, and I'll put in a stick there to say, that's what I planted. We will add more cuttings into here and see what we get come spring and summer. Today is one day after I built the box and I realized that it was drying out super quickly. We have all this free water around and this free insulating material as well. Snow is really good for providing insulation and of course also really good for providing water. I decided just to scoop some snow on top here and this should melt down into there and also keep more of the heat in at the same time. So I'll kind of, I mean, I don't think I'll bury the whole thing up in snow, but I will bury three fourths of it here in snow just to make sure that we keep some moisture in here. I'll just keep doing this as long as we have snow. And as soon as the weather warms up, of course, this will melt into there. This is just one day after I built the box. I uh, just noticed it was already starting to dry out, so I decided to add the snow on top. You can hear the creek running. It's back, which is great. We've had quite a few colder days, obviously, uh, and I put this in just before the coldest of the weather hit. You can see I've added a whole bunch of cuttings in the meantime. I cut these from plants I planted last year, so that's King of the North grapes, and I've got a consort black currant, I've got an imperial currant, I just marked these on wood sticks. I've got bluebell grapes, I've got plums from Carrie's family farm, and we've got a perfection currant back here. And I just wanted to show this because Things have already started coming up. This is April, we're in the mountains, end of April. But you can see the currents, the imperial currents here. There's already some currents coming up there. Let's see if I can get that to focus. The currents are already starting to show signs of growth and life here. Consort black current. Same thing here. You can see it here, I thought it'll focus in. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I put these in here about, I don't know, five weeks ago, six weeks ago. And the currents are definitely showing that they are going to live, <laughs> which is pretty awesome, just from cuttings. And uh, so I hope we get some of these King of the North grapes as well. Um, that's pretty exciting. I also have, oh, Itasca grapes right here, but they're not showing any signs of anything just yet. But hopefully we'll get some Itasca grapes as well. I don't know if I put any bluebells in here or not. I thought I did. Oh yeah, bluebells right here. I showed that at the beginning. So hopefully one or two or three of these bluebells will show. And I've got a ton of the King of the North ones here, so hopefully those will show. And then in the middle, I've got blue spruce. I don't know if these are going to root. Apparently, it takes a lot longer for a piney type stuff like this to root, but they all seem to still be kind of healthy, you know, as I touch the needles on them. They're still pretty wet. They're not just falling off or anything. So at least some of these are going to make it. So that's pretty awesome. It'd be great to end up with a whole bunch of blue spruce as well. Well, started this journey quite a few months ago. I thought I'd better make a video and show you what happened over the summertime here before everything starts to change colors. I'm already seeing the leaves start to change colors. I think what I started off with when I was making the video, and I'll have to look at this when I'm editing it, but I started off with all these plums and some of them did leaf out, but none of them actually survived. And I think it's because I had them sitting in a plastic bag for like a week and a half or two weeks. And I just think they didn't have enough moisture in there. So some of them did okay for a little bit. I may leave them here until the spring and just see uh, if I leave the heating mat on again over this winter, if any of them come back. Perfection current, and I stuck a bunch of them in the ground. And you can see that some of them came up, which is pretty cool. And uh, they have, I, I pulled on them a little bit. They have some pretty nice roots underneath them. So that's awesome. Also in the back here, these are consort black currants. So these guys really came up nicely. This one does really well here. Definitely take cuttings from these again. I'm guessing there's probably 20-ish plants in here of black currants. So consort black currants, and then I have imperial currants here. I think there's six or seven plants there. I could count through them, but yeah, there's like five or six, maybe seven plants in here. That's pretty cool. And in the spring, be able to do something with that. Blue spruce, and uh, I, I don't know, I probably put 20 of them in here, 25 of them in here. And so it looks like three or four of them made it and actually decided to put some roots down. So that's pretty cool. These two guys were a real surprise. These are actually seeds that fell off of the blue spruce here and decided to sprout up. They've done well so far. So hopefully 
if I just leave them in here over this winter, I probably will just turn the heating mat back on and leave them in there. Probably won't even try and transplant them this year. I'll just leave them in here and let them grow a little more, but then I'll have two blue spruce trees grown from seed, which is pretty cool, totally unexpected. And then I have my King of the North grapes. So these are called King of the North, which is a kind of grape. Found out that they do really well here. So I took some cuttings, same process I did with the plums, and stuck them in the ground, but you can see like they've all grown up really nicely, grown out this year. So these are all nice starts. And then I had a bluebell grape that a chipmunk came along. You can see I've got this blue tube here. They use these for making sure the right UV light hits plants and they're protected and they're protected from critters. I happened to come across this bluebell grape, which I'd been growing and taking such good care of. And uh, a mouse came along, I think, or a chipmunk and chewed it off. But I was able to put some uh, rooting hormone on the bottom of it and stick it in the ground right here. And it did fine this year. You can see it's already starting to change colors. Man, it's been a fast summer. That is the result of this experiment. Starting in December, putting some cuttings in the ground using rooting hormone. Man, it has worked really well. I'm excited to be able to multiply plants this way. It is pretty fantastic. So I don't know how long the edited video will end up being at the end of this, but I just want to thank you for coming along on this nine month journey with me. It's probably, yeah, nine, 10 months now. And if you were bored at any part, hopefully you've bumped it to 1.5X or 2X. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. And I hope to post more gardening videos and shorten your time frame of watching the progress of things like this happen. It's been really exciting this year to just learn this skill and uh, be able to actually use it to grow more plants. And uh, hopefully these grapes will grow and turn into actual grapes that we can eat. And I'll hope to document that as the years go by. Thank you very much. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up below. Be sure to subscribe as we have more helpful videos almost every single day. If you have any questions that we can answer for you, please be sure to come and visit us at showmehowtodothis.com.